Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for March through June. Over the last 30 days, we've seen cooler than normal temperatures on average across the Great Basin. However, we are starting March with very warm temperatures well above normal across the Great Basin. The pattern, however, will be changing as we go through the first week of March. Precipitation has been well below normal in most areas of the Great Basin. The only exceptions have been parts of central Utah, where precipitation has been near or just above normal with some higher elevation snowfall. However, for the most part, we're seeing very dry conditions across the region. Since October 1st, 2021, the beginning of the water year, we've seen generally near normal precipitation over parts of central and eastern Idaho into Wyoming and also into the higher terrain of northern and central Utah. We also saw some storms, fairly significant storms, move through the western side of the Great Basin, which did bring some areas up to near to above normal precipitation. However, southern areas of the Great Basin still remain below normal for the water year and also, again, parts of northern Nevada and Utah and up into central and western Idaho. Currently, we have no large incidents across the Great Basin. We are getting occasional small fires, but these are easily extinguished and certainly are not showing any rapid spread. Our snowpack has been dwindling here with the drier conditions over the last month or so, so we have dropped to below normal in most areas of the Great Basin but still anywhere from about 60 to 80% of normal. Some areas that are closer to normal are parts of central Idaho, parts of central and southern Utah. Again, some of those areas that have seen some higher elevation snowfall. But for the most part, we are seeing these conditions are pretty representative across much of the West, generally near to just below normal snowpack. Soil moistures have been dry over the periphery of the Great Basin, again, with our drier conditions we've seen recently. And our 10-hour fuel moistures are most critical over the southern areas of the Great Basin that have really been on the drier, warmer side of any of the storm systems moving through. Further north, where we have the storm track tracking across Idaho and Wyoming into northern Utah for the most part, obviously the grasses are showing higher fuel moisture. We're seeing similar trends in our 100 and 1,000-hour fuel moistures with areas most dry over the southern areas of the Great Basin. Again, seeing that similar trend in the 1,000 hours as well. Looking at our evaporative demand drought index, again, with the warmer and drier conditions we've seen recently, we are seeing more significant trending drier in our drought conditions over southern areas of the Great Basin. Further north, again, not quite as much, really not seeing that drought signature, at least no significant change here in the last few weeks. Looking at our longer term drought, we still have a significant drought over parts of southern and eastern Nevada into western Utah, where we're seeing extreme to exceptional drought. But certainly we've been seeing improvements over the last several months with some precipitation, especially across Idaho into western and northern Nevada. This is definitely good news for our larger fuels. However, we will be watching these areas, especially over western and northwest Nevada and into parts of southern Idaho for spring fine fuel growth. Typically when we start increasing our fuel moistures and increasing our moisture in general and getting out of these higher drought categories, we tend to see better crops of fine fuels. So again, that is something we'll be looking at through the spring for some of these areas for increased fire potential. Otherwise, over southern areas, we will still be watching some of our higher elevation timbers and also some of our sagebrush, watching some of these more significant areas of drought. Looking at our drought outlook, we're not really seeing any significant changes to our drought here over the next few months. We could see some drought development or intensify over parts of Idaho that have been a little bit drier recently, but we will at least see some storms moving through here over the next few weeks. So putting everything together, looking at La Nina and El Nino, we are still in a weaker state of La Nina with these cooler sea surface temperatures. But as we move through the spring and summer months, we are expecting some warming to occur, putting us more in that neutral category through much of the fire season. Typically what this does for us is bring more of a transitional pattern for progressive weather patterns. So we are looking at potential areas of wind at times, certainly drier and warmer periods in between, and then um, some storms moving through with some lightning. So again, we'll be looking at that more when we get closer to the fire season. The 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us from March 8th through the 14th. Again, with the change in weather pattern, we will start to see much cooler temperatures across the Great Basin and the better chances for above normal precipitation will be over the eastern half of the region, still keeping western areas on the drier side. We will see some moisture moving through at times, even over western and southern Nevada, but this was, will likely be on the lighter side as far as any precipitation accumulation. Looking at our four-month outlook, again, through March, we will see that return of cooler temperatures, um, 
possibly some wetter conditions over the eastern side, but again, still dry down south into the southwest. As we get into April and May, we'll likely see more of a warming trend, especially towards May, and certainly a better chance of much drier conditions going into southern and eastern areas of the Great Basin. So this will be taking us into our spring months, the early start to the fire season. So we'll be watching this pattern. If we do see significant warming and drying, we could see an early start to the fire season over parts of the southern half of the Great Basin and also see more rapid snow melt, which could push our, our higher elevations to have more available fuel a little bit earlier in the season as we get towards the summer as well. So we'll be watching this pattern pretty closely because this will certainly tell us our timing of fire season and what areas might start to increase a little bit more rapidly and possibly earlier. We'll also be watching again, Western areas of the Great Basin up into Idaho. If we do see that warmer and drier trend, we will see those grasses dry out fairly quickly. So depending on how much growth we get this spring, that could be an area of concern heading into the summer months. So looking at our outlook through March and April, really just showing normal conditions and even into most of May, we'll be watching that weather pattern for April and May. So we could be adding some above normal areas for fire potential for May for southern areas of the Great Basin, depending on that warming and drying trend. But it looks like later in May and by June, we'll be looking at some of the higher elevations of Utah that that snow melt might melt off fairly rapidly and we still have some drought concerns. And also even over parts of southern and eastern Nevada, both in the low and higher elevations. We have drier, higher elevations with decreasing snowpack. We also have some grass growth down in this area that might be residual from last year which did cause some fires down in those regions. So we'll be watching as we get into May and June, some of these Southern areas, but again, still keeping an eye on Western areas of the Great Basin and up into Idaho, especially as we get towards that June, July period. But we'll be targeting that more in the next outlook. That concludes our seasonal outlook for this month. Check back next month for the recent updates.